you want to hear something crazy? 90% of guitar players quit guitar within one year of having started, according to a study by Fender. You have every resource you could ever want for free on the internet, but out of every 100 people who start playing guitar, Within one year, only 10 of those are left playing. So today, if you're looking on how to learn guitar later in life, I wanna walk you through my process so you can get going on guitar, you can get consistent, stay consistent, and learn a couple of songs that you would have enjoyed growing up, or a couple of songs that you just like to do for fun, even if you've stopped and started guitar before in the past. So I wanna to start today by just laying a foundation of what we're gonna cover. And it's to do with a free guitar workshop I was given in a small town here in Ireland. And as part of that workshop, it was a free intro to guitar class. There was kids there, there was one adult, and then there was one lady in the store who was in her 70s, at least in her 70s, I'd say. And she said the words to me, she said, oh, I'll be too late for me now. And my mind just went, oh, somebody who is kind of interested in guitar and who won't get to learn it because they're telling themselves it's too late. And the reality is it's never too late to learn a couple of chords and a basic strum pattern to play some really well-known songs. So I never taught somebody at that age. And I took a chance. I said, do you wanna, do you wanna take a seat and we'll try? And she sat down on my guitar here and Basically, I looked at her hand and yeah, I, I get it, like your hands mightn't be as agile at older age and stuff and there is considerations, especially around like arthritis and joint mobility and everything like that. But we gave it a go and we took it slow. And she basically put on her A chord and like this and we took it a small step at a time. And yeah, it is true, like young kids learn fast and those kids all around her pumping out chords, pumping out chord shapes, just doing their thing. And I just shared, I was like, listen, focus on your thing. Focus on your chord. And she got her chord. Now, what this has to do with you watching this video today, the first rule of thumb here is that all you need is around four chords. And you might've seen this online, but all you need is four chords and that can unlock hundreds of well-known songs for you. Even if you don't sing, even if you don't want to do bar chords, you don't need to. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I said to her, that's one chord. And I said, if you just take that shape and put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off, and forget about everybody else around you, forget about everything you're hearing, everything you're seeing, get that one chord. And I gave her a couple of minutes. And she's like, oh, I think I got it now. And so she strummed and we got it. And then I said, you know what? You're 25% of the way there to getting four chords. And I could see something in her eyes that she was like, huh. And that's one thing I wanna share with you today. It's that think of these as small little milestones. A chord is a serious milestone to get on guitar. And when you get a second chord, you learn two shapes. And I'm making this super simple because with this walkthrough here, I want you to be able to come away from it and take action. Not just be left feeling motivated or inspired, but to leave with tangible stuff you can act on. So all you gotta do is get one chord, get another chord, and then you go back and over between both of them. So if I'm on an A, you see here, it isn't a good idea for me to learn how to do this. Doesn't sound nice. I'll do it again. So you wanna pick two chord shapes that sound nice with each other. A and E are two very easy ones. Now, with your chord shape, you'd want, and by the way, if you're, if you're wanting, like if you're actually wanting a guitar lesson full of like, how to make chords, how to do strums. I have a free five day guitar course that you can get in the link below this video. But we'll keep going for a second. <clears throat> so, and in that course, you get your three chords and it's like your first five days on guitar. Three chords, how to change between them, how to get them clear, how to strum, and including some singing. And we pick a super easy song to start. Happy birthday, right? A very useful song. I know if you're older, you might be like, oh, I've heard that song enough in my life. 
but it's worth learning and it's a nice easy one to start with. So if you want that, get it below and I'll see you for class for that. It's free and I check in with you all throughout the week. Now, back to this video. You have one chord shape, then you get another chord shape. And all you're doing is making sure they sound clear and you practice changing between both chords. And that's your one focus. You play the chord, you play the next chord. That's it. In terms of improvement, you then count how many times you can change between the chords in a minute. So if I was going between A and E, that's one change, two, three. And what you do is you basically write down how many of them you can do in a minute. And then you keep that as your metric. And I don't know, if you're of an older age, you may have done investing, um, and you may not have, but you may have heard about this, but like performance of stocks over like over day to day, it's so volatile. Performance of stocks over a week, a month, years, that's when you see the, the trajectory go up in general. It's volatile at points. And like that, with your metric of your chord changes, when you count them day to day, some days you might get maybe five in a minute. Then you might change from A to E seven times the next time. Then on the next day, it could be nine times, but then on the next day, it could be four. Your performance will be up and down in the short term, but in the long term, you're looking at the numbers. Is there a baseline that's steadily going up? I did this with a student once where for 30 days, I asked them to track their chord changes, and yeah, the numbers were up and down, but you could see when you zoomed out, the baseline started to improve. They went from like on average getting five in a minute to eight to 10 to 12. And really all you need to be able to do is go between two cards like 12 times in a minute. That's pretty fast. <clears throat> so that's the next thing. If you're two cards, you work on chord changes. You measure your chord changes on how many you can do in a minute. And you remember that progress will seem a bit up and down. And that's why a lot of players quit, by the way. They, they're looking for the quick gains and it's only over time that you begin to see those, okay? But you gotta stick into it long enough to see the gains. So then, your two chords are there. They're clear, you're working on that. You're making them faster. And it's almost like juggling. If I was juggling two chord shapes, now I add in the third chord shape, and this is where you begin to unlock songs, the third chord. Now you can imagine, I can't juggle, right? Um, but like I'm gonna air juggle, and you see if you're trying the third chord now, your eye could go off the ball, okay, excuse the pun, but you could suddenly go, oh, what am I doing here? So then with this third chord, and for example, you could pick a D chord, so we'd A and E and D, well, all you gotta do is get the D sound and clear, start practicing going between the A and the D, doing your chord change test, going between E and D, logging your chord changes as well, and you're keeping track of how quick you're changing between these. And I get that you might be saying, Dave, this sounds like army stuff. This sounds like a drill. It is. <laughs> but I promise you that when you track your numbers, you're tracking your performance and your progress. When you track your numbers, you're gonna to wanna to see them go up. And if they're not going up, then you're gonna be in a position to ask why. And when you wanna ask why, you're gonna know exactly what's going wrong. So let's just say for argument's sake, I could change between A and E 10 times in a minute. And after a month, I get that up to 20 times in a minute. But my A to D change, has actually just stayed the same. Well then, you've the data, you can go to a community, I have a free community, you'll find it below, and you can ask, listen, my A to D change just isn't great. <laughs> um, I can change this many times per minute. Uh, how can I get it up to a 10 times per minute? And with that then, that allows you to basically know what needs improvement. Now, the next thing, so your three chords, we're all linking this up. This takes guitar practice before I get into strumming. Of course, if you don't show up to play, nothing's gonna happen. This will just be another video worth of info that you might have consumed 
and thought it might sound cool, but then mean to do something about it. So in terms of an action item with this info I'm sharing, I'd suggest make learning guitar a priority. If you, if it's been something on your to-do list and it's later in life and time is, time is going by, or you've stopped and started and you want to get back to it, well, check in with yourself. Can you make it a priority? And what does that look like for you? So here's an example. Player A goes, um, okay, I'm gonna do this and yeah, I'll, I'll be playing more guitar this week. Uh, I'm feeling like I wanna get back into it. Player B, you know what? I went to my calendar and I penciled in three 20 minute blocks per day one in the morning before everybody gets up or one in the morning before my day gets busier one in the afternoon after dinner or after lunch and one in the evening before bed uh, my evenings are busy i do evening classes on wednesdays and fridays so i'm going to do my practice session earlier on those days do you hear how planned that is right and i don't know have you heard that saying uh, Fail to plan, plan to fail. <laughs> like, of course, you need room for spontaneity in life, of course. But learning guitar is a skill. And skills need discipline and they need intention and being proactive around when you're doing it. So I don't know, I don't know who had that quote. I don't know, maybe you know, comment below if you do. Um, what gets scheduled gets done. So by scheduling it in, you're not leaving your week like this player to the whims of everything else that can come at you. So, that's a bit about penciling it in. I would recommend, like the, the five day guitar course I have, I recommend like at least 40 minutes per day, 20 and 20. So if you did an hour per day and you stayed consistent with that, knowing that your progress will be going up and down like the stock market in the short term. And <laughs> I know as an investor, you might be looking at this going, God, I hate the stock market. It's so volatile in the short term, but, um, yeah, so basically up and down, but overall, check how it's going. Now, which brings me to my next point. I'm just gonna grab a water here. I hope you find this useful. I just did this video off the cuff with no edits, no fancy stuff. Um, I just, I get DMs and I get emails from players going, have I left it too late to learn guitar? And that breaks my heart because I think about what life would have been like for me if I hadn't, been taught guitar if I hadn't found it and also for all the students I've taught including people who get it for their 50th birthday present and they want to learn the guitar or 60 or 70 or above like you know there's always something you can do um, I'm just gonna grab water one sec <clears throat> so we've covered what chords we've covered to work between the chord changes we've covered about scheduling it in so it's intentional we've covered getting the chords clear and we said there's four chords. If you learn four chords, that can be enough to do a ton of stuff on guitar. Um, and I was saying, yeah, I get DMs and emails regularly from players going, have I left it too late? And the truth is you haven't. Could there be physical limitations at your age depending on what's going on? Yeah, there could be, but there's always a way. Um, so I forget who is the quote, I don't know, Tony Robbins, like find your way or make a way. I, lo I love that example, you know? So. The one thing I will share, your guitar type can matter. Like, could you imagine if I want to be a race car driver and I got an old beaten up four gear car that had no speed, you know, or a manual or an automatic. I'm not in the right vehicle. Like that, you need a vehicle that will allow you to play easily and learn. Um, there are a ton of guitars out there, so much, but you could be on a guitar that isn't the best for you or the strings aren't. So for that reason, I'd suggest first of all with the strings, that if you change the strings on your guitar to tens, strings come in different gauges and there's 13s, 12, and they're measured in thickness. Tens are the lightest strings. If you started on those, you'd have a much easier time pressing on your fingers. And then after a while, you can upgrade to 11 gauge strings. And what that'll allow you to do is that'll allow you to just 
get in on guitar, start with the basics, know what to do, measure it, it's scheduled. And if you see the way all these things and all these things lead up to success, as long as you stick with it and you get corrective feedback as you go. So that was our that was our thing around strings and guitars. Um, the guitar, in case you're curious, I get this question. Ba I have a Taylor. It's a baby Taylor. It's my favorite guitar in the whole world. I've had it 10 years this year. Um, Taylor are an amazing brand. I love Taylors. Uh, so that's our strings. That's our guitar. Uh, do you need to use a pick? Yes, I would recommend it, just in case you're wondering. And now let's get into strumming. The next thing then with strumming is you have your chords and in that in that guitar course we're starting off basic we're basically going happy birthday to you i'm basically going back and over like that and the rhythm is all downs because you're not being going happy birthday to you happy birthday is a very like sung birthday which makes it a good one okay so Single strums. That's how you begin doing your rhythm. There is a there's many strum patterns up online. You may have seen ones on YouTube going easy strum pattern, start with this strum pattern. If it doesn't work for you, you're kind of left in limbo then. It's very much um well that didn't work. What do I do now? Do I look up another do I look up another video that says this is easy and I don't know what it is? So you set a metronome. I'm gonna get this here. Anyways, I hope you're enjoying this longer video format. It is, uh, I've done the whole YouTube thing, like cutting them and doing all this edits and graphics, but you know, somebody lately said to me, they're like, kind of feels like we're just hanging out here. And I, I like that feeling, you know? So I know you're on the other side of a device watching this, but I, I hope this is connecting with you because it's, it is possible to learn guitar. It just has to be done in the right order. Um, so this is a metronome. Hope that's in focus. All right, this helps your timing. All you would do with this at 60 BPM, that's the speed you set it at, and the app I'm using is called Guitar Tuna. You just get your chord and you just strum down on each chord. Okay, I'll do it here. So hopefully that carries. Right. See the way I'm matching it. Right, now, that builds your rhythm and it builds the foundations of having better strumming. Because all the cool stuff, like this, if I'm going like this. Now I go. And you see the way I varied from it? That metronome allows you to stay in time. And you see, if you stray from it, it feels weird. But all the cool rhythms you see online, if I'm doing stuff like this, me and Julio, that's going, the main beat is there. So you get your steady beats first on guitar, strumming down, and I teach that in the, your first five days on guitar, which is below. And then that way, you're getting your chords clear, you're working on your changes, you're measuring your changes, and now you're building your sense of timing to stay on the metronome, right? Now, what that allows you to do then is, the very first rhythm I'd suggest you learn after that, after you can stay steady on a metronome, is going down, 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 up, down. So it's down, 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 up, down. And that looks like this. Right, um, and that's used in a ton of songs. Do you know the Ticket to Ride by the Beatles? I think I'm do 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 because it's today. Right, it also used Obla D, Obla Da, Life Goes On. Right, that rhythm, strum pattern is used in so many songs. And then it's really a case of practicing that on its own. And that's the approach. If you do not want to quit guitar, you've got to know, one, what you're focusing on, 
two, how you're improving, and three, what to do if it's not working, right? And the three is obviously, sometimes we look at more videos to try and fix it, or we look at, we might post a comment under a YouTube video, hope and for help from a huge channel and stuff. So uh, yeah, so like I have a free community, if you wanna check that out, that's below too. Um, I do pop in there and take questions for a weekly live Q&A. Now, that was your strum pattern. We'll wrap this up soon, right? Um, if you have any questions you want to address or share your story, like I, I got an epic email lately from somebody and it was around when they start a guitar and their whole journey of starting and stopping. And you know, share yours below. I love reading these. Uh, then, what do you do with songs? Now you have three chords, A, D and E. Another good group of chords to learn are G, D, E minor, and C. If you learn those four chords and you buy yourself a capo, which you might be familiar with a capo is, it's this little device here. This allows you to play many songs with four chords. Okay, like for example, I'll do this here. Africa by Toto, watch this, four chords. Gonna take a lot to drive me away from you. Right, or if I go like this. No woman no cry. Those four chords, when they're rearranged, can be used to play a ton of stuff. So, that's the story. A, D, and E are good to start, then G, D, E minor, and C. And by the way, you might remember what we were working on. Work on the chord changes between them. See, a lot of players jump into songs, and the songs, like, the songs just don't songs entices on the instrument but we get lost in them and then it's hard to know what to do and then we stop and start so if you take out what's in the song as ingredients and you're like okay where do i get these ingredients so no woman no cry the ingredients g d e minor and c ingredients need to learn g need to get g to d changing quick need to get that strum pattern and this way you can basically Ace your way to success. You always know your next step. And then last thing about a strum. When you get the strum pattern, you play it on each of the chords on its own. Because each chord feels different to play. So when you try your strum pattern, play it on G. G will be nice and open. D, you play less strings. So you have to like constrict your rhythm hand a bit. It feels different. So just be sure you're getting that on each chord. And then you got your chord changes moving fast, you've tracked your metrics, then do the strum pattern on each of the chords. And when you do that, you're gonna find that guitar becomes easier. But life is life, life is life. And stuff will come up for you and you'll stop and start and you'll go for a long time and you'll wonder, God, what if I get off track again and maybe it will happen? And then you're faced with the thing of going, well, oh, I need to, I forgot how to do that or that's hard again, that was easy. Well, the thing I'd encourage you to look at is what's your overall baseline still? Because when you raise your standards on guitar, you create a brand new baseline for yourself. And we're so busy learning the stuff that we don't look at our baseline. But even when you get back into it then, when you've done your work for a long enough streak of time, you're going to be at a higher level of guitar. And it'll take you a lot less longer to get back in the saddle again, so to speak. So that's what I'd say, to handle those moments as well, but just to get back to it as quick as possible. Uh, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm going to wrap it in a sec. Uh, now, if, if you've enjoyed this and you're like, Dave, man, just, I, I want to do guitar lessons. Uh, I'm booked, one to one I'm booked, I am booked, right, um, I don't know, at the time this recording the channel is 17,000 subs, but I do have a monthly guitar membership, it's like, it's for nothing, because I'm in there every day, and the idea with this membership is that you come in, we talk, we do a one to one, one, -to -one call at the time of this recording, and we get your guitar goals, um, and then I basically lay the path, because all you gotta know is your next right step, what that step is, how to do it, and to be held accountable so you'll actually do it. 
and then you just go back and you do the next again and it's just this cycle and imagine like we had 70 touch points where there's 70 mini check-ins where I'm like okay you did that card change well done what are you working on next let's figure it out those 70 iterations will far outperform any approach where you're left your own devices online kind of picking this and picking that so if you want to know more you're going to find the link for that below as well but uh, I hope you found this video valuable and I hope you find it a use and most of all please don't stop playing please play guitar like I believe that guitar it isn't like some mysterious thing if you're finding a calling to still play guitar and still start it and do it again at an older age that's for a reason and just honor it and get into it all right so ah oh, i'm gonna leave that there thank you so much for watching and you'll find everything you need below this video and i'll see you in the next one